Once again, good morning. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the indigenous peoples with whom the Upper Canada Treaties were signed and the territory wherein all our churches reside and our responsibility as treaty members. We also honor the heritage and gifts of the Métis people. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. And we would like to welcome all of those who are from our own congregation at Grace as well as those from other congregations who are joining us and uh, to celebrate together this, this uh, Good Friday as we are able to gather in person and in community. And thank you too to Derek and Helena for providing us with the music, to Rod who will be reading for us, and to Bonnie from the United Church Reverend Bonnie, who has uh, helped to put this all together and will be co-officiating with me. And I'm Cheryl Christian from the Anglican Church here in Arthur. We begin in your green service book, Book of Alternative Services, on page 308. the service for, for uh, Good Friday, 308. And most of your material is in that book. Responses are printed in bold print. You're invited to stand for this first portion. And it's always an invitation, it's not a demand. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Christ the Lord became obedient unto death. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We pray you of your mercy, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, look graciously, we pray, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willingly to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And our first reading is from the book of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they have not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For, for he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. 
He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offering and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to turn in your green book to page number 728, number 728, and we will read responsively the psalm, Psalm 22, verses 1 to 17. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the wounds, words of my distress? O oh my, oh my God, God I, I cry in the daytime, daytime but, but you do, do not answer. answer. By, by night as well, well but I, I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel, our forefathers, Our forefathers put their, their trust, trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot sheared. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs, Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. 
They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Our second reading. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is number 192 in the blue hymn book, the blue common praise, and we'll sing verses 1 to 3 before the gospel and the rest of the verses after the reading of the gospel. Hymn 192.
After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with the police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. They stepped back when, they, when Jesus said to them, I am he, and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish authorities that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what, who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and, was, and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. They replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. 
This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and, was, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So, you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to them again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but they cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed them over, him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus. Please stand. Please stand. And carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him 
and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. <clears throat> it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the police chiefs of the Jews sent, said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples, whom he loved, standing near her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was, Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified man broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldier came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified to you, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true. And he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to, to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Holy words, holy wisdom. Please be seated. We'll continue with our hymn number 192, and we'll sing verses 4 and 5. Verses four and five.
I am a cross. I was once a tree, tall and straight, growing out of the earth, nourished by the sun and the soil, made strong by the wind, swaying my branches. I have given cool shade to the weary. I have marked the way for travelers. I have spread my branches and welcomed climbing children. My leaves have nourished the soil and by their death have brought forth new life. I have been home to crawling insects and small furry creatures have found their shelter in my hollows. I have cradled the nests of birds and protected their little ones until they could spread their wings in flight. Once, when a great procession was passing by, a small man climbed up into my branches to get a better view. I have been praised and mocked, cared for and neglected. I have watched suns rise and set, felt seasons come and go, endured pounding rains, been buffeted by winds, and still I stood tall and straight through the passing years. Then the ax came. With a few mighty blows, I was felled to the ground. I felt the pain of it, and again as I was cut and shaped and trimmed. They dragged me from the place where I, I had spent all the seasons of my life, where I had sheltered birds and children and weary travelers. They hoisted me onto the shoulder of a man who hauled me up a hill. Then, then they stuck me in the ground into a hole that they had prepared. But though I stood tall and straight again, it was not like the place from which I had come. I no longer had roots to draw strength from the earth. I no longer had leaves to dance with the sunlight and nourish me. My branches had been stripped bare, no longer welcoming the delightful play of children. It seemed I had lost all connection with life. Then, the nails. And a new weight hung on my tall, straight trunk. But it wasn't a weight such as I had ever known before. This weight had life force. I felt connected to this weight. This person lifted up and fixed with metal spikes driven into my wood. There was pain, but not the pain of the nails into me. It was the pain of the world, the pain of the man hanging there, the pain of rejection the sorrow of betrayal, the grief of a world crying for redemption. And then his gasping ceased while he was still hanging there. Not much to tell after that. The crowd slunk away in silence and shame. I was left there with a few stragglers and a couple of others beside me who had met the same fate. Eventually, someone freed me of this now dead weight and took him away and left me alone. And that was it. Or so I thought. But what I didn't realize was that in my weathering and decay decaying, I was returning my life to the soil. And from that would spring new life. And that was what I recognized in this man when he hung from those nails, the life force that even in death could bring forth new life, the life of the world. I am the cross. I was once a tree, tall and straight, growing out of the earth, nourished by the sun and soil, made strong by the wind swaying my branches but now I know that the world was made better 
for the life I held, for the life I lived and gave back to the world. He gives himself again with all his gifts. And now we give him something in return. He gave the earth that bears, the air that lifts, water to cleanse and cool, fire to burn. And from these elements he forged the iron. From strands of life he wove the growing wood. He made the stones that paved the roads of Zion. He saw it all and saw that it was good. We took his iron to edge an axis blade. We took the axe and laid it to a tree. We made a cross of all that he has made and laid it on the one who made us free. Now he receives again and lifts on high the gifts he gave, and we have turned awry. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved, that all who believe in Him might be delivered from the power of sin and death 
and become heirs with him of eternal life. Let us pray for the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church of Christ throughout the world. And for the prayers, you're invited to either stand or kneel or sit as you prefer. For its unity and witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers, and the people whom they serve, for Susan, our bishop, and the people of the Diocese of Niagara, and for the governance of the other churches represented here. For all Christians in this community and other near neighboring communities, for those about to be baptized, for those about to be confirmed, especially Jennifer from Palmerston, that the Lord will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by your spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in our vocation and ministry we may truly and devoutly serve you through, your, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them, for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all the royal family, for Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister, and for the government of this country, for Doug Ford, the Premier of this province, and the members of the legislature, for Andy Lennox, the Mayor of this municipality, those who serve on the Wellington North Council, and for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, <clears throat> that justice and peace may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and the homeless the destitute, and the oppressed, for all who suffer persecution or prejudice, for all who suffer and flee war and violence, for the people and the land of the Ukraine, for the sick, the wounded, and the handicapped, for those in loneliness, fear and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. <clears throat> Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, hear the cry of those in misery and need. In their afflictions, show them your mercy and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ for all who have not heard the words of salvation, for all who have lost their faith, and for all whose sin has made them indifferent to Christ, for all who actively oppose Christ by word or deed, for all who are enemies of the cross of Christ, 
and persecutors of his disciples, and for all who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have departed this life and have died in the peace of Christ, and those who fa whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the infectious working of the providence carried out in tranquility and the plan of salvation, let the whole world see and know that things that were cast down are being raised up, and things that had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for the meditation of the cross of Jesus is in the Red, Glory, and Praise hymn book, and it's found at number 31. Number 31, we're just going to sing the chorus together, and I'll sing the verses as we go through the meditation. I'll first sing the chorus, and then we'll join in it together on the second time. of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Holy God. Holy and mighty, 
Holy and Immortal One, have mercy upon us. O oh my people, O oh my church, what have I done to you, or in what have I offended you? Testify against me. I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I led you through the desert 40 years and fed you with manna. I brought you through tribulations and penitence and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I have done for you that I have not done. I planted you my chosen and fairest vineyard. I made you the branches of my vine. But when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink and pierced with a spear the side of your Savior. Holy, holy God, holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, and you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I scourged your enemies and brought you to a land of freedom, but you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. I gave you the water of salvation from the rock, but you have given me gall and left me to thirst. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys to the kingdom, but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on a cross. Holy, holy God, God holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. But you draw the sword to strike in my name and seek high places in my kingdom. I offered you my body and blood, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I sent the spirit of truth to guide you, and you close your hearts to the counselor. 
I pray that all may be as one in the Father and me, but you continue to quarrel and divide. I call you to go and bring forth fruit, but you cast lots for my clothing. Holy God, holy, holy and, and mighty, mighty, holy and, and immortal one, have, have mercy upon us. I grafted you into the tree of my chosen Israel, and you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you joint heirs with them of my covenants, but you made them scapegoats for your own guilt. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you have restored us to life by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue this healing work within us. May we who partake of this mystery never cease to give you dedicated service. We ask you, ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, together we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church peace and concord, and to a sinner's everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Send down your abundant blessing, Lord, upon your people who have devoutly recalled the death of your Son in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Grant them pardon, bring them comfort, may their faith grow stronger and their eternal salvation be assured. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.